Hello again. I'm still Daryl, strangely enough. Okay. So I thought I'd talk about the beagle bones today. Now, what is a beagle bone? Well, it's like a like a Raspberry Pi sort of, as in it's a little little computer that looks like that on the screen. But let's let's talk about some background. So. During 2014, I worked out that we could drive lots of pixels from a beagle bone. Um, the idea was that it could do it at a very low price point, but no software existed. So I played around last year and just didn't succeed in getting it to run pixels the way I wanted it to before Christmas. So there were these guys making capes. Cape is a daughter board for a beagle, beagle bone. And it lets you plug the pixels in. It's basically just a tiny circuit board. So six months ago, I donated a couple of beagle bones and a couple of these capes to a couple of the Falcon player guys to try and convince them to spend a bit of time working on integrating it into Falcon Pi Player, as it was then known. And strangely enough, Captain Murdoch and uh, Dave Pitts made it happen, and here we are today. So back on the beagle bone, they're about 70 bucks in Australia. The different, main differences to, to the Pi are that there's no HDMI, it only has a single USB port, but it does have onboard storage, and it has special PRUs, which I'll come back to in a minute. And shortly when they release it, it will also run the Falcon Pi player. So we've got a more in-depth picture of the beagle bone. Um, I mean, it has an Ethernet port, it takes power, and it has expansion ports. What's on it isn't terribly important. What, it's more what it can do. So these PRUs, they're dedicated real-time CPUs, effectively, and they can drive some types of pixels. So they can't drive every type of pixel like a lot of the other controllers can, but they can drive the common types, the, the 2811s, the 2812s, and some of the ink varieties. Now, at the point I wrote this presentation, probably about six weeks ago, I was more interested in the pixel side of it. But the thing that's become much more interesting recently is they can also drive panels. You've probably seen my, um, my panels over there lighting up nice bright colours. Um, they're essentially showing as a high, high, high density matrix. But these PRUs are the reason why we're talking about the beagle bone today and not the pie. The, the PRUs give the beagle bone its, its specialness. So capes are little, um, little expansion boards that you plug onto your beagle bone to expose the pins that you need to get to or to um, add additional electronic circuits onto the pins. Um, I'll pass around this cape, which is a mostly built octo-scroller cape, which is what you would need if you wanted to run um, lead panels, like we're over there, for instance. Um, the display box I've got next to that um, those lead panels actually has five different types of beagle bone capes running. There are four different types of um, pixel capes and there are some falcon ones that can also do your power injection with your um, for your strings and then there are some data only capes um, made by RGB123 and also by Alec here. He makes the, the pixel bone cape that shows up in my display box. So some of the capes have additional features, be them DMX output or real-time clocks or um, ways to feed power into your beagle bone or LCD screen test buttons or power outputs. Essentially, you can do anything that you can build a circuit for on these things. It comes down to uh, what have the cape designers decided to add to their capes. So the first cape I'll talk about is um, one made by Falcon, the, uh, from the Falcon Christmas forums. Uh, it's got 16 pixel outputs, capable of 680 pixels per output. It also has some DMX outputs, a, a clock, 
optional LCD display. Uh, and it has, you can add two expansion boards onto it to take it up to a total of 48 outputs of 680 pixels per string. And that is enormous when you compare it with the um, controllers on the market today. Then they've made a smaller version, just four outputs. I guess it's trying to be a bit like uh, um, the little Pixlite 4 or the, the, the J1 Sys P2 to an extent. And then this is the RGB123 board that I started with, which has, does the same number of pixels as the Falcon board that I was talking about just before, um, only it doesn't do any of the power. And so it's very, very cheap circuit. And then this is the current version of the Pixel Bone. Uh, this version does 32 outputs, although I hear Alex going to make the next version do maybe 40. Um, and it has a real-time clock built in, and Alex actually selling these for about 40 bucks, I think he told me. 20 bucks if you want to solder it yourself, but it's all SMD, so good luck. <laughs> so he's actually got a few of these here for sale today if anyone's, anyone's interested. So if we talk about the panels, um, which is the little um, circuit board that's floating around the room, the Octoscroller, the Octoscroller is the only cape available um, at this point in time to drive panels from the BeagleBone. Now, whilst there might be off-the-shelf commercial controllers that can drive panels, none of them are really designed or suited for the, the Christmas um, hobby. And so this is more or less, at this point in time, your only real option to drive panels in your display from your sequencer. So these were designed by um, a guy in New York um, for LED displays that he does. Um, each one can drive up to 64 panels at a time, has eight outputs on the board, and you can daisy chain up to eight panels. The panels themselves that I've got over there, Ray is selling for $11 US each. So they're quite a good price point. Although you have to note that in the current form, they're not waterproof. So maybe Phil later will show us an idea of how he's waterproofing his. And that, that display matrix over there on the table is six panels. So that's what a fully completed Octoscroller looks like. The one passing around the room is is missing six of its outputs because the eBay seller didn't uh, deliver on time. <laughs> um, and I actually have some unassembled boards and chips um, for sale here if anyone, anyone needs any. And there's a thread on the forum that says where to get the other parts and you can solder one up for yourself. Um, your alternative is to essentially download the file off the internet and send it to a PCV manufacturer, um, which is how I got these. Um, so you can do anything on your panel. You can run a bit of text. That was a display on my living room table at one point. Um, so on the software side of it, you have one piece of software to choose from on your BeagleBone at this point in time which is the new version of Falcon Player, which is coming out. Now, Falcon Player has two different modes that it can run in to drive these panels. You can run it in bridge mode, which essentially makes the BeagleBone and the Octoscroller act as an E131 controller. So much like your Pixlite or your J1Sys or your um, uh, E682 or whatever sort of controller you're running, or you can run it by uploading your sequences onto the BeagleBone into Falcon Player and running it from there. So this is the main startup screen of Falcon Player. Now, you're probably, if you're running Falcon Player on a Pi at the moment, you're probably running it in player standalone mode. Here today I'm running it in bridge mode, so it's acting as an E131 controller. And I have another Raspberry Pi in that box that's running the sequence and sending the E131 packets to this piece of software. Configuring the panels is very easy. There's a LED panels tab and basically you define your panel layout. So in this case I've got a 2 by 3 panel set up. I def define the orientation so all my panels are facing up 
but if they're all facing left or whatever, then you could change it here. And then you configure which output on the octo scroller of the eight outputs that each panel is plugged into, and then um, which, which panel in the chain it is. Because each output can take eight panels. And so from here, this panel number one is the one that's plugged into the octo scroller, and then panel number two is plugged into panel number one, and panel number three into panel number two, and so on. Um, and that's really about it. I think the, the panels are, are a new way forward this year that give you an easy way to do a high density matrix compared to making it out of strip or out of strings of lights like these in some sort of backboard or something. Um, the trick is to either make them waterproof or to put them inside your windows um, and run them like that. Um, so I don't know if you want to show us your waterproof, hold up your waterproof one, Phil. You can make, you can use up to 64 panels off that controller, which is probably more than you want to buy. As many people in chat know, I'm a bit of a, bit of a fan of Lycra. Lycra covers a whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm out of here. You're out of here. <laughs> um, and yeah. I've thrown the Lycra across the front of this. I'm not happy with it, um, and it's probably going to come off after me. But the essential feature in terms of waterproofing it is, we just spin that round so you can actually see the back of it anyway. This is standard one millimetre, no actually this is 0.75 millimetre, vinyl tablecloth from Bunnies. Nothing more than that. No, it's as cheap as chips. Uh, it's actually a bit thick. I'm actually going to, when I come back from Adelaide, go and buy some 0.3 millimetre and try that. It's as tough, it's as tough as. Someone's, someone's not going to punch you or anything else like that, so it's effectively safe. Um, You've got to take a really sharp knife to it to cut it, so I wouldn't be potentially worried about that. Um, all I've done is basically got a staple gun, stapled it around. Um, I've actually wrapped it from the bottom here at the front, around, up front, around the top, and back down the back. I'm actually quite comfortable once I actually, you know, stick a couple of staples in here once everything's bedded down hang this outside of my garage. I'm not going to worry about it getting actually wet all year or all season. I think it's actually pretty close to, you know, it's not 100%, you know, if the wind's going to blow rain up in here, I might have a problem. Horizontal rain. <laughs> Horizontal rain, <laughs> might be a problem. But I suspect that, you know, once you've run a couple of staples in here to actually lock that down, I think this thing's more than capable of being waterproof. Or weather, yeah, weather resistant anyway. So the, the heat is less of an issue than pixels because essentially on these panels only a quarter of the panel is lit up at a time. So your eyes won't see that, but if you film it or take a photo of it, you'll see that you only get a photo of part of it. I suspect the DC DC converters in here will actually generate more, more heat than the actual yeah. panels. Mm -hmm. That's my suspicion. Think, so I was thinking if you're going to wrap the whole thing and seal it up fully. Then I've got to dry it. The black panels, the, the, the heat from the sun is going to be absorbed by the black plastic board and the panels that generate heat. So your maximum heat time is going to be in that afternoon the sun when we've absorbed all the heat. So while we're looking at the back of this panel set up, what, there's a couple of things I want to point out. One being the um, cream coloured bits of plastic. They don't come with your panels. You've got to source a way to join your panels together. So one option, yep, so one option is 3D printed joiners like this. The other option is um, Perspex cutouts that Cosbert, I'm sorry, I don't know his real name. Corby. Sorry? Corby. Corby is making in Wyala, and he is sending the, he's selling those to members. And I believe there are some here for sale. And they're designed, the screw holes are supposed to, um, to line up with these panels. Yep. Um, so that's the first challenge in joining them together. The second challenge is probably your data cabling. Um, they use ribbon cable between each panel. 
and when you buy the panels you get very short pieces of ribbon cable like Phil's pointing out there to join between two adjacent panels. So if you need to get from the end of one row to the end of the other then you need a long ribbon cable. Well I can make them and supply them here today for your length because I bought a roll of ribbon to build mine. Um, other than that you have to buy the ribbon and buy the connectors and, and make them. So there you, your components. You need your, your beagle bone, your octo scroller, your panels, a way to join your panels, a way to waterproof your panels potentially, the additional data cables, and you can solder onto the cables that come with them to make your power cables.